Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, we're back. We're live here on Think Tech. It's, uh, gee, it's 12 o'clock on a given Monday. And as we'd love to do, we have Mina, Marco, and me uh, on energy on Monday every other week. And this time we have a special guest. And I'm going to let Marco introduce her. Marco Mangelsdorf, ProVision Solar in Hilo. Say hi. Well, very kind of you, Jay. Hi, hi, hi. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's my uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Jenny Potter, who is a a PUC commissioner in waiting, who I've been uh, very pleased to uh, agree to be on the show with us today, Jay, and uh, it's uh, it's a great pleasure to uh, to have Jenny on the show. And again, I want to congratulate you, Jenny, for for becoming or soon to become the next uh, public utilities commissioner for the wonderful Aloha State. I have uh, very great expectations, high hopes, and 100 uh, percent, 101 percent confidence that you're going to do an absolutely fantastic job. So thank you very much for being on the show with us today. Hi, Jenny. Thank you for appearing. You're appearing by, uh, by uh, Zoom and VoIP from Maui, and uh, you look terrific. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. And, and I, as I said before the show began, be ready. You are ready to step into history now because this is a, a time when all the vectors are coming together. This is a big historical intersection for energy in Hawaii. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's, it's quite an honor to have been nominated, confirmed as the new commissioner and, and at such a time in history for Hawaii and, and where we're moving forward the next six years. It's going to be incredibly exciting, challenging, and it's an honor to be on the show. So thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, we want to talk about, uh, you know, your, your um, views of things and your interests and aspirations. But before the, we do that, I'd like uh, to ask ask Marco how things are in Hilo, because there have been a lot of uh, news events in Hilo, and I'd like to get an on-the-scene report from him. Marco? Well, to uh, kind of take away a little bit from uh, a fe all-female band years ago uh, called the Bangles, is just another lava manic Monday here. I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, we had the trifecta last week of earthquakes, a lava flow, and noxious gases. Uh, the earthquakes have subsided over the past several days. We had a 6.9, which uh, shook a lot of people up, and I think was felt in on Oahu as well. The earthquakes have subsided, but the lava is continuing to flow out. And uh, my heart really goes out to those uh, dozens of people who have already lost their homes and had their their land, their property, probably at least in their lifetimes, permanently uh, uh, destroyed, essentially made unusable by lava that has covered their property. Uh, hundreds and hundreds, if not more, who have uh, sought shelter at various locations in, in Puna, and just the great uncertainty of uh, what comes next, how far the lava is going to flow, where is it going to flow. And one of the concerns has been uh, Puna Geothermal Venture, which is a geothermal plant uh, in that neighborhood uh, that has been operating for 25 years now, and that uh, plant has been evacuated as of last week, uh, and Helco is compensating by bringing another generation online. Uh, Helco uh, purchases somewhere around 35, 38 megawatts constant from that plant, which is not inconsequential in terms of the total demand for power on this island. And uh, one of the looming concerns is that there are tens of thousands of gallons of uh, stored pentane, which is uh, somewhat of a byproduct from the geothermal process stored in tanks there, which is flammable. And there are containers, I understand, on the way to take that pentane away, but that's going to take time. So hopefully Madame Pele will allow for a safe uh, removal of that flammable gas. But, uh, you know, bottom line, a lot of people are, are on edge here, especially those closer to uh, to the volcanic flows and eruptions. Yeah, we haven't had this kind of thing before. This is really special. Um, and wow, um, geothermal, you know, you always knew that geothermal is subject to uh, seismic uh, disruptions, and here we have a perfect example of it. Well, um, uh, Marco, can you uh, go further than introduce Jenny now? Can you can you uh, ask her to define her views and her expectations in the job coming up on June 30? No, I'd be happy to. I guess my first question to you, Jenny, 
uh, to kind of set the background is what uh, what brought you to Hawaii uh, when you decided to move out here? I believe you told me in a, in previous com- communications it's been what several years or so since you've been here. So I think people mm-hmm. would appreciate kind of knowing your story in terms of what brought you out here. Sure, absolutely. Um, it's it's um, kind of a I guess a sad story. <laughs> I don't know, um, I, but um, I I'm I'm a single mom. I have a, a beautiful 19 year old daughter, and we were living in a community um, in in Antelope, California, which is right outside of, of Sacramento. So it's a bedroom community, and it, you know it had been really uh, it had gone through a tremendous overhaul uh, because of the housing crisis. And so my once beautiful neighborhood has become very, very shattered with crime. And, and it was, you know, we were we were really scared. And, um, I, and honestly, I didn't know how scared we were until I moved to Hawaii and found peace and, and you know, serenity. But, um, but basically, when one night we, you know, the helicopters were deployed over our home and they were shouting things and we knew someone was running amok in our neighborhood. And I was with my daughter about two in the morning and, and said, hey, wouldn't it just be great to get out of here and she said, let's just do it, mom, let's just go. And, and so I said, where do you want to go? And she said, Hawaii. And well, of course, <laughs> where else? And, and I said, you know, I, I know someone in Hawaii, I'll, I'll give them a call and, and let's get out of here. And so I bought a ticket, I bought two tickets for three weeks out from that date. And we sold everything that we had and put my house on the market, including, you know, sold my cars and everything and we were gone. So um, it was really an issue of, of just being fearful of, of how the mainland has been changing and the things that were happening there and kind of, and looking for, for a place where there was aloha and, and safety and security for my daughter who at the time was 15, um, you know, and so she, so yeah, it was important for me and for her to, to find a place where, which was safe and, and had a sense of community, which, which was clearly gone from, from Sacramento at the time. So, and, and we found exactly that. I mean, my, my neighborhood, um, we eat Thanksgiving meals together and Christmas meals and, and, um, you know, with my neighbors and it's, it's, it's a beautiful place and we found nothing but, but great opportunity and, and much aloha in, in our new life here. And so it, best decision I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very, very hardening story. I mean, I know the area somewhat because I spent four years stood right down the causeway to the west of Sacramento and the People's Republic of uh, Davis, University of California, Davis, where I got my PhD. So I, uh, I too, uh, you know, found a home here in Hawaii 18 years ago now, and it's, uh, you know, I can't think, uh, I really don't think of moving anywhere else or living anywhere else. Uh, what is it that uh, brought you to energy as a subject matter, as a field, and, and, and in particular, the whole uh, regulatory end of things? Kind of what's your, what's your, your path? What's been your path to energy and, uh, mm-hmm. and r- the regulatory field? So I would say uh, first and foremost, yeah, I went to school. Um, I got my master's in public policy and management, and, and I did that. Not, I didn't get an MBA. Um, I got up in, in public policy because I, I I knew I wanted to be a public servant. So that meant you know working for not for profits and for governmental agencies. But that was certainly what I wanted to do. My parents were public servants, and um, it, it just I just appreciated the fact that there's um, there's a lot of opportunity to really affect society and and you know and and to make an impact in in that area that you you can't really make perhaps in the private sector and, and not in the same way exactly um, so I, I energy was always of interest um, in fact I, I remember taking a class in the, in, in the energy and graduate school um, and it was pertaining to depositing nuclear waste in Yucca Mountain um, and and that certainly started me thinking down the line of, of where I wanted to go and I ultimately I got a, a, a position at as a, a small public utility, um, a, you know, a not for breakfast, it's a municipal utility in the city of Roseville, was in Sacramento. And ultimately, um, you know, I really forecasting. Um, I was doing a, a great deal of, of energy, like low profile analysis, customer specific research. And then I moved to SMUD where I, I started working more directly with demand response, energy efficiency, and then ultimately uh, the smart pricing options pilot, which was, um, 
you know, one of the largest pricing pilots done and, and, and certainly has been recognized as the most credible um, and, and, and groundbreaking in terms of what it was able to uh, reveal about using time-based rates in order to affect change um, uh, in, in how customers use energy. And so that, that immediately led me to working with the Department of Energy and the California Public Utilities Commission. And so at that point, I, I started working with some of these, these larger regulatory entities and, and trying to establish and identify opportunities for the regulatory environment to affect change using raised or demand response. Um, and then ultimately at the lab, after I moved from SMUD into the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, we worked on the demand response potential study for the California Public Utilities Commission. And so it really was during that time and at my time at the lab that I really got the vision for being a commissioner. And um, I was like, how, I remember Googling, like how does one become a commissioner, <laughs> you know? And um, which seems like a silly thing to do, but it's, it's a great question, right? How, how do we get there? And I was thought that it was publicly appointed Appointed and, and you know had to be appointed by the governor, and um, and I was like, wow, I don't know how that's going to happen anytime soon. So you know, I kind of just put it on the back burner, but definitely set a goal for myself that somehow I'm going to become a commissioner within you know at some term point in my career. Um, and so I think really having the ability to do these kinds of studies that were so that, that really did in fact impact how policy was made in, in particular in California. Um, California, as you know, is moving to um, time of use rates for its residential customers. And really the, the, the smart pricing options study that we did at SMUD is, is hugely responsible for that. It had a big, big influence on how the utilities and how the commission perceived time-based rates and being able to move customers by uh, defaulting them, putting them on this, these rates, like you could see involuntarily, but just really changing their rate structure in a way that would hopefully incentivize them to change their behavior to better match some of the needs on the grid. And then furthermore, the demand response potential study also has affected um, the, the commission to evaluate different types of demand response programs that are more like responsive demand. So instead of looking at how we can, you know, like capacity-based curtailment of, of, of load on the grid, now we're talking about how we can actually match demand on the customer side behind the meter to what's needed on the grid in order to provide resiliency and stability. And so that that actually has also moved um, policy forward. And so that that was a, those were both very, very encouraging to me to see, you know, that, that we can take research and we can actually expand, you know, and use it in the regulatory environment. And I hope very much that, you know, as I move into the, the uh, role of commissioner that we'll continue to look at these kinds of studies, these technical and, and evaluate these, the facts and the information that we get from so many of these great organizations such as you know, Hawaii Natural Energy Energy Institute and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab and, and even other utilities that have been implementing programs that have been so successful and, and really changing how we use energy behind the meter and not just focus so much on supply. Mm. Jenny, you, you spent some time at HNEI. Um, can you tell mm -hmm. us what you did there um, and what, yeah. you, what you learned there and how that has prepared you for being a commissioner now? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, so, so I, I haven't, I, and it's really unfortunate because I've enjoyed my time at HNEI. So it's a bittersweet, you know, nomination in, in regards of, um, of, there's some of the projects that I've started I won't be able to finish. Um, I, there's one in particular that I probably will be able to finish, and that's the Pathways to an Open Grid project that's actually an elemental accelerator um, project, and it's also supported by HNEI. And uh, it, it looks at, evaluating um, the grid um, in, in Oahu in particular, but it could be expanded to all of the islands in a way that um, uses open source data, so data that we can find readily upon, you know, from either the federal government through FERC filings or EIA, as well as, um, you know, Google and building information and census information, as well as um, low profiles from, from solar and outputs to actually evaluate the locational net benefits of given resources at locations throughout Oahu. So understanding that, that there's 
there's a distinction between the value of a, perhaps like a, a DER or a distributed energy resource in one part of Oahu versus another. And those, the value of that is probably different because of one, how, how energy is delivered to those sites or the constraints on the distribution system at those sites. Um, and then also uh, losses um, from transmission. Uh, there's, there's a whole host of, of other components such as energy efficiency that could have more value um, in one area of, of Oahu versus another. And so uh, looking at that, that type of project from a, a viewpoint of a commissioner, um, it's, it's really valuable to understand the types of tools that are at our disposal to, to basically further our understanding of what kinds of programs and what kinds of incentives and rates that we should be developing that are sensitive to temporal and locational attributes um, of, of energy delivery and uh, how we can develop those types of programs that are behind the meter to better develop to match those on the supply side uh, where we see you know distinctions in the in the grid um, uh, throughout the day and throughout you know throughout basically locations throughout Oahu. So um, yeah, and there's another project that we're working on, um, which is a virtual power plant project, and that's on here on Maui, um, and that uses batteries that are sited at Nico and also at uh, Haleakala Solar, and they're uh, tied into solar panels at Haleakala Solar, and the idea is to use those batteries um, from those different locations um, to, to actually provide grid services or to optimize the energy use behind the meter at each of those locations, um, and, and doing that in a way that we're aggregating distributive resources to, to, to really identify opportunities for dispatching those in a way that, that's really constructive for the grid. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, we're going to take a short break. That's Jennifer Pot Potter, recently confirmed PUC commissioner. And we have Marco Mangelsdorf from uh, ProVision Solar. Uh, this is Mina, Marco, and me on Mondays. I'm Jay Fidel. We love energy. And we'll be right back after this one minute. We're going, to we're going to discuss exactly what her vision is going forward in history and at the PUC. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live and me to Marco and me and Marco Mangelstor joins us, ProVision, joins us from ProVision Solar in uh, Hilo, the, the land of eruption, may I say. Uh, and we have uh, 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 Jennifer Potter. She's a new PUC commissioner, just confirmed. She will, she will take office on June 30th when Lorena Kiba's term expires. And we are looking forward to, uh, to seeing her do her thing there in the PUC. So um, I was going to suggest to Marco, um, you know, that this, this part of the show, we should ask Jennifer her views in general um, and how she, how she intends to, uh, what role she intends to play on the commissioning and the development of energy in Hawaii in general. Well, actually, gee, if I may be so so bold and bossy, I would actually, given my political science background, I'm really kind of interested in just posing maybe another question or two to, to Jenny regarding the process, which uh, yeah, I find it fascinating that uh, you've wanted to become a commissioner for, for some time now, Jenny. Uh, that's a little bit of a surprise, and, and, and yet it's a good surprise <laughs> because it confirms to me that you know, sometimes uh, putting it out there to the universe, so to speak, without getting too much Ram Dass or, or Airy Ferry, 
you know, you, you envision what you want to do, how you want your life to proceed. And sometimes, of course, it doesn't work out that way, but sometimes it does. I think it's great that you you wanted to become a commissioner for, for some time. And my questions to you are kind of twofold. One, uh, how did you come to the attention of uh, Governor David Ege? I don't imagine that you camped out there on the fourth floor of the, uh, <laughs> the, the Capitol building, you know, wanting to catch his eye as he walked by. So that's the first part of my question is how did you come to the attention of, of David Ige and his staff? And, and what was the process like for you from when you got contacted by the governor, one of his staff members, to uh, actually getting Senate confirmation several months later. I'm just kind of uh, would be very interested to hear how that experience went for you. Yeah, I'd be happy to speak to that. It, um, it, it was an amazing process. I, and like you said, it was probably one of those things where I did put it out to the universe and it kind of came to me. I was I was shocked and, um, and very surprised when I was approached. Um, and so I, I, I actually was on vacation. Here's, here's the funny part. So I was on vacation in Kauai and there was a, a pod meeting, which is the Pathways to an Open Grid. And I had, you know, prepared some analysis and some and done some some data work. And, and I felt that it was important for me to be there. So I flew away from my, my Kauai vacation and then and, and ended up in, in Honolulu to present at this uh, at the pod conference. And um, and so we, it, it's, a, it's a, meet, a stakeholder meeting, not necessarily a conference. So while I'm at the, the conference, um, you know, apparently I caught some attention. And while I was presenting some of the results um, of, of my analysis, and so I get a phone call a few days later um, about setting up a lunch with a gentleman from Sunrun who um, who I had never met before. But apparently he, he said, you know, there's quite a few of us that have taken note of you and are very interested in, in you know, putting, he had actually asked, do I have any political aspirations in my career? And I said, yeah, I'd like to be commissioner sometime. And he said, I'm very happy to hear you say that because there's a, quite a number of us, um, you know, from different entities and organizations that have taken note of you and are very interested in putting your name forward to the governor um, and so I and from my understanding is that um, the, the groups the different entities um, and probably like uh, Hawaii Solar Energy Alliance and, and Sunrun and different groups um, and including like Sierra Club for my understanding um, went to see uh, Jay Griffin and and proposed to Jay that um, perhaps he ought to consider my me as a nominee and, and put my name to in, in front of the governor and so Randy and Jay apparently decided to do so. So I got a call from from um, the, the governor's office and um, asked for me to come and, and conduct some interviews over the course of the day and do that in a fairly quick time frame. So I was, you know, I was over there shortly after after all of this went down and it, it, it did it took maybe a month i mean the whole process maybe six weeks um i, I spent a lot of the time i met with the, the governor for a very very brief it was maybe a 40-minute conversation and then i spent a great deal of time with his staff um and then was called back uh, by governor Ige about a week later and um said that he selected me as um the uh, he's appointing me as as commissioner and that prepare for the confirmation process and going through that so i worked with his staff very closely they were wonderful um and this was lisa harioka um and and ford and several others that and lynette from from all from the governor's office who who guided me through the process of basically campaigning and that's really what it felt like is you know and 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 it was in a way i needed to meet with every senator um, and and hopefully sit down with every senator at least touch base with um, their staff and and you know make myself available so for several weeks I came back and forth um, from Maui um, to Honolulu to meet with the different senators and that process um, did, did take a little while and it was I you know I think about 80 hours of interviews all together by the time I was done I met with other stakeholders of course as well and you know um, including the Solar Alliance and Blue Planet and and just making myself getting my you know available to these to these different groups and letting them meet me so that they could have some some confidence and and you know who they were going to be working with in the future if if I was confirmed and then in the case of the senators um, you know hopefully winning over their confidence and and that I would be an appropriate um, candidate to fulfill this responsibility for the next six years so um, and obviously that was very successful the um, the committee hearing uh, with uh, Senator Rob Baker was very positive um, I, I believe I had about 50 
69 pages of, of support from people who submitted testimony, and, and it was really, really uh, an amazing experience to, you know, to have that much support um, come out for me and, and people that actually made themselves available for the actual committee hearing and came in support. Um, that, that was wonderful. I mean, I was, I was so honored. honored. And then um, to have the, the whole Senate floor take votes and be voted in unanimously, you know, shortly thereafter, less than a week later, was just a confirmation of, of how, how great, it, you know, people have been in, in supporting me and that testimony that they provided that really did win over the confidence of the senators. So, um, so it, it, it took a village. I think um, it took a lot of work on my part, um, but you know that's that's how we get things done, right? <laughs> If I could ask just a quick follow-up, Jenny, that, that if you could scroll back to that phone call where you were offered the position, how did you feel at that moment in time? What what came up? I I uh, was. I actually started crying when I got on the phone uh, with tears of happiness, of course. It's like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, you know, this is this is it, just such an honor. Um, and of course, you know, talking to the governor was kind of like the governor just called me. <laughs> you know, this, is, this is really happening. So, so um, you know, I think uh, it, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I, I sum it up. I'm pretty humble. I, I, so all of this has been just really an honor and, and I, a lot of just is this really happening? Um, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of expectation, high expectations of me, and, and I plan to fulfill all of those, but, you know, the whole process along the way and the, the fact that this is a reality has is, is really been, um, it's been amazing. And uh, so, and, and a tremendous amount of joy for me and in fulfilling this, what has been, you know, kind of a, a, an end goal for my career and to have achieved it so early in my career is is remarkable, and I'm, I'm not taking that for granted at all. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely question and a lovely answer. Thank you so much for letting us in on that, Jenny. Um, I, I guess my question about, um, about uh, your views and your expectations uh, for service on the PUC will have to wait until our in a, until our behind the scenes, um, you know, segment, which will take place after the show. Uh, but for now, um, I wonder if I could get uh, Marco to tell us uh, his reaction to your appointment and what he sees going forward for you. Well, I thought uh, I thought then, Jay, and I think now that uh, still that it was a home run. That I'm I'm very excited to, to see, perhaps for the first time in the history of this commission, that there will be two people, uh, Jenny and Dr. Jay Griffin, who I also think very highly of, uh, along with uh, Randy Wasse, but two who have a very deep uh, background in uh, the wonky nature, and I don't use that as a pejorative at all, the wonky nature of, of utilities, electric utilities and regulation, because uh, many times in the past there have been lawyers, and I have nothing against lawyers. I mean, you're a good friend of mine, Jay, and you're a lawyer, so I, hold not, I certainly don't hold that against you. Thank you for that, think, Marco. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, given given the, uh, the different environment that we have now compared to five, let alone 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, in terms of how the world has, the, how the earth has moved uh, regarding utilities and distribution, transmission, distributed generation, um, that to have people like Jenny and Jay there, I think, is just fantastic, uh, fantastically beneficial for the uh, the state of Hawaii. And uh, I really expect great things from uh, from the three of you. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we've I feel uh, unsatiated to say the least at this point that we've only just kind of barely scratched the surface. And I'm hoping that we can have Jenny back either in two weeks or in four weeks because I think there's so much more interesting stuff that we can discuss. So I, I am taking the liberty, Jay, of of uh, extending the invitation for Jenny to come back and talk to us. I join, I join with you, Marco. I hope you come back soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna say farewell. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny, for coming on the show. We look forward to having you, you again and again, Marco. Thank you so much for being on the show as always. Um, we'll say farewell, but in a few minutes, we're gonna uh, right after the closing credits, we're gonna we're gonna continue our discussion behind the scenes, and so we'll be able to find out finally the answer to my question. We'll be right back. <laughs>